Hey guys, my name is Andy Jones, and uh, thank you for joining me on this uh, webinar. Um, just a quick backstory on me as I started my life studying sculpture at Mass Art in Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, got getting out of school. I had a really hard time sort of justifying the, the sculptor's life. Um, also, I was broke, so I started waiting tables. Uh, one day, one of my customers left a digital camera behind, uh, just like a little crappy Olympus clamshell. And uh, I started shooting around with that. I really, really loved it. Then I started assisting for a photographer who was kind enough to let me. And uh, he sort of showed me some stuff in Photoshop that got me thinking. And then I started retouching photos and painting. In Photoshop and then that sort of led the way to 3D. Um, a lot of things changed for me particularly when I started using Keyshot. Uh, there was a lot of limitations, a lot of hurdles that uh, I didn't have to overcome using Keyshot that I was really struggling with with uh, more traditional render packages. Uh, so Keyshot definitely has a special place in my heart for that for sure. Uh, and if you're a ZBrush artist and somehow you have not used Keyshot, uh, just go download it right now. Because it's, you know, the two are just so amazing together. All right, so here's a couple of past pieces. These are all rendered in Keyshot. Um, some other past work. All right, so let's get into first inspiration and warming up and all the, the things that start the process. So um, one great, one, one technique I like to use is something I actually did a instructable for a really, really long time ago. I'll include this link, but you can also find it right here. Um, and so this is pretty straightforward. I'll go really quick. Um, obviously, just get a piece of paper, something you like to drink that'll make a stain, preferably caffeinated, uh, spill it around. Drink your coffee for a minute, let it dry, and then just sort of see what kind of shapes you can come up with, you know, what you're thinking. It's a, it's, again, this is not a way to get anything final product or even like a concept, a thumbnail or anything. This has nothing to do with that. It's just simply a way to get you warmed up, start thinking about shapes and things you want to make. Um, if you don't want to make a mess, you can do it with uh, all sorts of different Photographs. I like to use clouds here, obviously, and uh, it's it, again, it's just a fun way. Especially if it's maybe it's a little early in the morning or late at night, and you're having a hard time getting into it. I highly suggest you just pen around, and you'll uh, you'll find yourself coming up with all sorts of cool stuff before you know it. So that's that. Uh, let's get into ZBrush real quick and look at the scene. All right, so this is my scene inside of ZBrush. My particular inspiration for this was really just a, a bunch of daylilies were blooming in my yard, and uh, I thought they were pretty beautiful. I thought I could do something neat with them, uh, especially with Keyshot's awesome translucent shaders, and uh, the bug just sort of felt right in that situation. So, without going too much detail in ZBrush, I'm going to run you through a really quick little... Uh, method that I use for making these petals. So this is just a regular plane. I'll go ahead and stretch it out a little bit. A little longer. I'm going to go ahead and change the material here because uh, that does weigh in a little bit in the uh, process I'm going to be using. So uh, just a little caveat here. I have a this is a custom interface, so. Not, yours isn't going to look like this. Um, I can certainly make this available for download if you want it, but um, everything here is obviously standard inside of ZBrush. There's no, no plugins or anything special. So, um, what we're going to be using today for this is a zap link here, which is also found here in the documents palette right here. Uh, but before we do that, I want to make sure we have a good amount of polygons to project our texture onto. So, Let's go ahead and subdivide a couple times. Three, four. 
five, six. It's a lot, but we like a lot of detail, don't we? And since we're using Keyshot, we really don't care. All right, so yep, dropper. It's gonna bring me into Photoshop here. Great, awesome. So uh, all I did here was just take apart a Tiger Lily and scan it in. Um, I didn't even go very high. It's a very cheap scanner, but it'll go up to like 600 dpi. It's way more than anyone needs. Way more than I need. Um, all right, so I've already sold this out. Obviously, you'd have to do that. Um, pretty easy if you scan it on white. All right, copy all. Let's get over to our zap link file. Paste. Oh, she's big. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down a bit. Place it. There we go. Let's get back in here. So the only thing you really need to keep in mind about zap link, it's pretty straightforward, and it's great for anyone that has Photoshop experience, is all your little tricks that you use in Photoshop, blend modes, and all that stuff apply. Um, so, but the only thing you really have to keep in mind is when you're ready to go back into ZBrush, you just need to make sure that the layers are a very certain way. This is exactly how they have to be. Layer 1 contains all the color data that you have, and then you just don't touch anything else. So let's go back into ZBrush. Check. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is good. There's one more thing you have to do. You have to save it. Brush. Re enter. There it is. Pick it up. Boom. Great. Whew. Looks nice, right? If, uh, if you're having a problem with things disappearing like this, it's just double. You gotta double it. And normally that's under here, under the display properties. All right, sweet. So now that we got that, we want to make the shape. And so what I'm going to use for that is the masking palette here. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, this isn't going to be the same for every project, every application, but I'll play around with it, which one, whichever one is going to work the best. So let's try a mask by intensity. A good way of checking what you're going to be getting for polygroup is to go ahead and just mask it off and press Control W and then Sometimes it gives you two send up bugs. There you go. See, I can see that's not really what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and try a different mask. Try mask by saturation. That might be good. That looks pretty great. Let's see. Control W. Ah, beautiful. Awesome. Let's pop the polyframe off here. Uh, control Shift and click to hide all others. And then Control Shift again to hide that, that same one. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of this white fringe right now with the visibility. And all I have to do is press shrink. Shrink, shrink, shrink. Looking good already. All right, sweet. So now that that's all hidden, just go ahead and delete hidden. That's uh, normally up here. Here, modify. Sorry, right here. Modify, delete hidden. So now we've got this. Again, this is really high poly, and you could go ahead and, and get this down if you wanted. There's all sorts of techniques for that, but we're not here to spend a ton of time in ZBrush today. Um, if anybody's interested in, in that sort of process, I'll go ahead and get in touch and uh, I can walk you through it. Uh, but for now, for all intents and purposes, I'm going to go ahead and just use the edge loop tool, or uh, sorry, panel loop. I'm going to go ahead and turn the loops down, and you want to make sure that you're grabbing just a, uh, a color that's going to suit your uh, your rim here, because if you just have it on white, it's kind of obvious. All right, so, panel loops, take a minute, look at that. Wow, sweet, we're doing good already. All right, uh, really quick on just uh, sort of posing these guys, is I will just use the mask lasso tool. Good. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a better way. Mask. Curve. Here we go. All right, so just drag that curve out. Should be pretty familiar for those of you who use ZBrush. There we go. I like to get the uh, the kink in first, uh, the middle sort of divot, because that's it's a lot easier if you do it now than if you're going to try to bend the flower and pose it up. So 
this, there's no real trick to this. It's just sort of taking your time, watching for stretching. Enough. Use a little more. Uh, with the rotate tool, uh, if you grab the middle ring here and pull it, it'll rotate it right on that axis. I use that a ton. It's really, really stretching. Pull that down. There we go. Oh, that's great. Let's just move that. Sweet. And as far as getting the curl, uh, again, that's just sort of hard work <laughs> or just diligence. I'm going to use the mass lasso tool here. Just start small, go slow. Um, helps to sort of follow natural lines here. Uh, if you control click on the mask, I'm sure you guys know it's going to soften it out. It's not going to soften out too much on this high poly, but if it was a lower poly, it would soften out a lot more. All right. And then again, it's just using the rotate tool. Just going slow. sure you guys get the idea. You can eventually get a nice clean curve out of that. And then when you're getting this stuff, the kinks and stuff, just go back in with the uh, smooth, or I'm sorry, the move elastic brush, BME for the shortcut. Make it a little bit bigger to turn down the intensity a bit. Pop it out. Uh, one of the great things about making flowers is that they're not really all that clean, so you can kind of get away with some stuff. You can smooth this stuff out. Just make sure you're not smoothing the, uh, the texture. You can turn off the RGB. And uh, if you do end up Z remeshing this and getting this a low poly, you can go ahead and really quickly bake out the texture map. And use that to power your displacement again. I'm not really going to have time to go into that today, but we can uh, certainly hit me up if you want to talk about that. I can show you what that the video. If you want. All right, sweet. So let's get back into the scene here and talk about a little bit about the geometric lighting, and then I promise it's in the key shot for all sorts of things. So I like to use geometric lighting, especially with uh, translucent materials. Uh, it seems to be just a really easy way of controlling it. Um, I think I have been told that they are di different algorithms, um, so that's something to consider as well. Um, really basic light setups, try to keep it uh, low poly. There's just no point in having really big high poly meshes with light. That's good. That's good. All right. So this is just a yeah a circle spot or a, a ring spot, and uh, that's going to have you know, a nice ring light effect. Uh, especially on highlight or uh, shiny objects, you're going to get that ring, just like uh, photo shoots have them and stuff. And then this is just a hood around it to keep it contained a little bit better. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> right. um, a really quick, easy way, if you're using the ZBrush bridge um, to separate materials, uh, aside from having you know separate objects, is to just Go ahead and apply a different, doesn't matter what it is, because we're going to change it, but just apply a different material to the different parts. And that's going to make it really quick and easy when we get back in the key shot. And we can just really quick grab that light again.
All right, sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and get this into Keyshot. I'm not going to make you wait for it. I'm going to pause the video and I'll see you in Keyshot. All right. Hey, guys. So this is uh, what the scene looks like straight out of uh, Gozi or um, using the bridge here. Um, it's really, really an amazing feature. Uh, you see it brings all the poly paint over, all the details in there because it's such, such a high poly mesh. It's great. I uh, love it. All right, so let's just quick talk about these lights. Um, as I had said before, you just want to make sure that the light is separated from the hood somehow, either with material or just being a separate uh, object on its own. You just unlink it, go ahead and set it to area light diffuse. I don't have any translucent yet. I'm going to wait to put that on uh, just because that's going to slow us down a bit. Uh, but go ahead and crank her up a bit. Maybe more. Maybe. So the light numbers here are going to be um, scale dependent. So just keep that in mind. And I usually like to just give it any color. Um, nice cool color is usually good for a rim light to sort of give you some contrast. Speaking of contrast, I'm going to go ahead and just turn it on. Dark gray so I can see what's going on. Nice. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with this one. Turn this one on. Unlink. Double click it. Go. Same rigmarole. I think this one probably be a little bit less intense. Your your back rim light's always going to be a little bit heavier than the other lights. Um, so I'll go four on with this one. Oop. Yeah. Woo. There you go. Try a 300. Nice. Sweet. And these give you this gives you a lot of nice control as well if you want to you know, get it out of the reflections or you know, what have you. You can crank up the samples if you want it to be really smoothy. Um, but I usually don't touch that stuff. So. First, just while I'm working on this, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, grab the new camera tab here. Just do that a bit so it's not quite so bubbly. Let's get in there and see what's going on. Nice. I think this all looks really cool. Uh, one thing that about the bridge materials that you should know is they, they come out of the gate with no spec whatsoever. It's all it's blacked out. So I usually like to bump it up a little bit just to see what's going down. Um, Obviously, a little roughness helps to describe the shapes that you're working with. Um, let's see. Looks good. Oh, we, I got an overhead ring, too, over here. Might not be necessary for this scene, but just to sort of get you guys thinking about different ways of using different geometry. Don't always just throw a plane or a... Or actually, don't throw a plane at all. I don't think planes work very well. It has to have, like, volume. Um, I, th I think. Um, but yeah, these are fun to play with for sure. I like the overhead to be a little um, on the warmer side, yellowy, because uh, it's kind of like mimicking the sun a bit. And try to get some dramatic shadows out of this. I'm going to go ahead and put it pretty high. Nice, nice. And uh, obviously, this is going to be to taste every time you're going to. It's it's fun playing around with these lights, you know. All right, enough of that. Let's talk about some translucent textures. Let's go ahead and get into the scene here. Go see which petals these are. Alright, I'm just gonna show these show this one for the purposes of being quick. Alright. So let's talk about translucent settings and then we're gonna get into the new material graph editor inside of Keyshot 6, which is just the bomb. Alright. 
So I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these. It's going to look weird, but I'm going to unlink it and then relink it. Just to keep it all one, keep it easy. All right. Now this is our material. We're going to go ahead and go down to translucent. It's already like looking awesome. I like to use geometric lighting with the translucent materials, uh, especially uh, just to get that specific sort of blast through look. Um, let's go ahead and always, you want to check the backside too, make sure it's looking all right. All right, sweet. So colors. <laughs> Sorry. My mouse got stuck. All right. So, um, usually like to, oh. All right. Sweet. So let's turn this on to translucent and get into material editor and all that fun stuff. All right. Sweet. So first off, the sub, the first color I like to usually try to give it a, a well, for this, I'm going to give it a warmer color. Uh, Part of the reason I chose this subject to work with was that the uh, the warmness, the translucency, that just the coolness that those flowers have is really, really prominent. And it really has like a lot to do with them. You kind of learn things that, like when you're looking at just the scan of the color, it's definitely it lacks, you know, what the rest of the what what a flower in, in the nature looks like. So, all right, I'm rambling. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jack this up. This again is scale dependent, like the lights, but usually like to go pretty high to see what it looks like first. Uh, I, I would say that that's a bit too high, probably. Uh, 20? Lower. I'm liking that better. Oh, nope. And, uh, yeah, definitely play around with extremes in these, because it's, it's kind of fun like that. Sweet. All right. Nice. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn up the spec on this a bit, too. Just a bit of that. Give us a bit of roughness. All right. Uh, there we go. I'm going to move the spot a bit. It's a bit close, but, I mean, already, wow. Look at that. That's so cool. Sweet. All right. So back this off just so it's not swipe so strong. Good. Um, you'll notice that Keyshot 6 has an awesome new, uh, Moving tool slash scaling slash everything you need right there on the handle. So that's awesome. Love that. All right. So I know material editor. This is what we've been, or graph editor. This is what we've been talking about. This is awesome. All right. So this is from the bridge. Um, if you're not using bridge, you obviously won't have that. And, um, this is the translucent material. So. One thing that I really wanted to capture was the way that even in the most extreme crevices of the daylily petals, that they have this warmth to them. So luckily for me, Keyshot came out with this awesome new graph editor with all these cool new things. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, just dive in. It is awesome. So I figured right away we could do this. This is occlusion. This is something we've been totally waiting for for a while and I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in there. I'm gonna plug this in here. Oops, sorry. Plug this in here. Alright. Alright, looking good, looking good. So in order to see the effect, right now it's not really doing anything yet. You'll see it's not too much going on. Yeah, no, there's nothing going on. Um so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this color gradient. I'm going to change this so it's not white. I'm going to go ahead and maybe bring it down to like a darker orange, maybe. 
I like, I like. I'll go ahead and plug that into the occluded. And um, again, uh, you have to keep in mind your HDR lighting with this as well, because I'm pretty sure that's where the occlusion is calculated. And it, I'm sure it takes the geom geometric lights into effect as well. But um, if you're not getting the result you're looking for, just try mess with your lights sometimes, because that's the way it's powered, as far as I know. Um, there's, I mean, there's so many cool things in here now. I'm loving this. There's, I mean, you guys know. You've seen the curvature one is super powerful for shiny stuff. They have to all these spots right in here, scratches right in here. Oh, it's so cool. So endless possibilities in there. Let's quick take a look at how this is rendering up. Uh, this looks cool. Let's go ahead and see what we're working with with the rest of the lights. Again, my system's a bit slow, so we're going to kill this light. So um, the translucents aren't going to really, it's not doing them justice at the moment. If you had a, a nice rig, this would be ripping. All right, so as far as composition goes, let's just sort of try to cut a cool silhouette. In the negatives, just try to keep that in mind, you know, um, making sure that you're working with your negative spaces. Uh, this, I think I ended up going back and fixing up a bit of this. Um, and then there's a concept uh, that I try to apply is uh, called the wagon wheel concept. I think I read about it in a Jake Gurney book, um, but I think it's an old idea of just having elements of your scene pointing to where you'd like so you got this leaf line kind of leading up here you got this one doing it here too and, you know, sort of this all sort of brings you into the subject and uh draws you in it's like i said it's an old concept but all this stuff is totally relevant for what we do today um so i would go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and pull up the finished scene uh just to save us some time here and uh so you don't have to watch me click around. So uh, I'll be back. All right. So I let it res up a little bit. Um, it's chugging along. Uh, having all these double-sided pedals in here is really definitely stressing my system. But man, it's so worth it when you sit back and watch this stuff res up. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I don't really have too much more for you. Um, but feel free to get in touch anytime if you like and uh, ask questions. I'm always available to uh, help people out. And um, I really uh, encourage you to get into the Material Graph Editor and, and really just sort of explore that because, man, there's just so many possibilities there. It's like a whole other level of control and and sometimes, you know, not control, which is great, too. You know, it's just exploration. You know, you don't... You can just click around and drag stuff in and so yeah uh i hope you guys learn something and go are all inspired and stuff and go make some cool stuff have a good one